everybody, what's going on? Hey, 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 everybody, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hello, Facebook, what's going on? Hey, everybody, what's up, what's up, what's up? So y'all know I was running from the airport to get here for live at nine, and I made it. How's everybody doing? Hello, Facebook. I've missed y'all. I've missed y'all so much. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? Y'all come on in. I'm going to get on all my other platforms. How's everybody doing? Hey, Instagram. Hey, Periscope. Hey, 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 man, I've missed y'all. I have, I have missed y'all. How's everybody doing? So I just got off of a, uh, off of a nine hour flight. I was in London and I was at KICC Women's Conference and it was incredible. I had a blast, uh, but I'm glad to be home. Um, so I guess in London right now, it's like, uh, cold and rainy. And so it's very cold and rainy. And I was only there for four days. So I traveled one day, preached for two days and got on a plane and came home. I would have stayed. Hey, Angel. Hey, I would have stayed. Hey, all of y'all. I see y'all giving me love. I see y'all. I didn't even put my makeup on and I didn't even put makeup on. I was that Fasting. I mean, I literally ran out of my car and jumped right on to live at nine with y'all uh, to get here for nine o'clock. Like I, I zoomed out of the car. But um, so y'all know my dad's got dementia. And so this year I would have stayed and enjoyed London a little bit, but I didn't want to leave my parents alone this year, you know, because it's like the first year my dad's really been bad. And so uh, I just didn't want to leave my mom alone. So that's how come I went and came right back. And so I missed y'all, but that's why y'all didn't see a whole bunch of pictures and fun stuff happening in London was because I was barely there, but I'm sure glad to be back with you. I got a great word for you tonight, an encouraging word. So how's everybody doing? Have y'all done for the last five days? Like what's been up? What's been going on? What's, well, y'all miss live at nine? Did we miss live at nine or what? Huh? Huh? I miss you too. I'm so glad to see y'all. So y'all know that we started the Inner Circle, my mentorship program uh, in October. And um, so now we're going into December. So it's never too late to join y'all. If you want more information about my mentorship program, there's tons of great testimonies of people literally, their lives are changing. Because how, why? Because you gotta start watching what you're putting in here. So you got Real Talk Kim every day, get up, you know, telling you to get up and live. And you know, we got all kinds of Henry's in our inner circle. I'm saying all of our inner circle people in here. Um, and, uh, we are all just encouraging each other. So basically what we're doing is we have a tribe that we're building a, a movement that has started called the RTK inner circle. And so if you want more information about that, you can tie, tie, you own it tonight. Ty is putting it up right here. You can just go to innercircle.realtalkkim.com, innercircle.realtalkkim.com and find out more about it. Get involved, man. Something good about that. I'm telling you, what's going on? Somebody just said they missed me doing that, so I had to do it extra tonight. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so y'all, I just want to encourage, man. I just want to get on here while people are still getting on. Go on and share, 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 share with your followers. Um, y'all know I got new teeth, right? So I'm still learning how to talk with my teeth. <laughs> I still spit everywhere. Like the other day I was with one of my friends, one of my pastor friends, and I and I get so excited. Y'all know I get so excited when I'm talking. And so I'm talking and I'm excited. And all of a sudden I'm spitting. And she goes, I know what you're not going to do. You're not going to, Diddy Freeman. She goes, I know what you're not going to do. You're not going to be spitting on me. Because <laughs> I get so excited. I'm still learning how to talk with them. They're permanent. They ain't dentures now. They're veneers. They veneers, because y'all know I fail. Uh-uh, my teeth ain't coming out. Uh-uh. Y'all know Dr. Heavenly did my teeth, right? And so y'all know I fail. 
I fell in July. I fell and hit my face and come to find out the pastor's wife uh, that I was just at this week in London, she did the same thing, but she fell and busted. It hit her, it, it, it hit her eye. And so um, literally I fell, busted my face, broke my teeth. And y'all know for a whole f- eight weeks, just about eight weeks, I'm on here looking in the camera. Y'all just keep looking at my mouth because you're going to see a miracle take place in my mouth. And man, I promise y'all, I thought, Listen, I thought, I knew a miracle was going to take place. <laughs> Y'all go back and watch the videos. <laughs> go back and watch the videos. Go on back and just watch them because our show was uninhibited. Y'all, hey, a lot of y'all wouldn't even have passed that test. Y'all would have been like, I'm out of here until I get my, my teeth fixed. Oh, not me. And then all of y'all, everybody, everybody in my world, all my pastor friends, because I kept traveling and I kept preaching with that yankety tooth right here. And I kept telling y'all, y'all keep watching because you're going to see a miracle take place in my mouth. <laughs> With that jacked up tooth. And, and and so we didn't see a miracle. We did see it come down a little bit, but I uh, ended up having to go get help. But Dr. Heavily told me, because I had part, I had a, whenever, before they can, y'all, I'm so sorry I did not fix my hair. I, I was literally on a plane for eight hours. <laughs> so literally, Dr. Heavily put in the temps at first, you know, and then she says, she said, um, she said, I, you have got me scared to death. She texts me one night, she goes, you've got me scared to death. You're on there preaching. And I I'm so afraid your teeth gonna fly out. <laughs> Cause y'all know I'm gray. I am gray. I can't help it. But Dr. Heavily, I, she's a girl, man. She got my mouth looking good. Y'all remember that? When I was on here, all my pastor friends, all of y'all lying dogs, all y'all lying dogs up in here. Y'all like, Pastor Kim, it don't look that bad. Your mouth don't look that bad. Your My tooth is dying. Yo, no, Pastor Kim, you got that T.D. Jakes gap anointing. <laughs> And y'all tell me, it don't look that bad, Pastor Kip. And one friend, I have one truth teller. No, I had a few. But one that literally called me one night, right before I was about to go preach. And he goes, dear God, Kim, what in the world's happened to you? You look terrible. (laughs) I was like, thank you very much for being honest with me because I've known this. But I ain't lying, y'all. I knew that God would listen. I knew that God was going to work a miracle. He, y'all, he was going to let that tooth, y'all. I, I literally believed so much that he was going to work that miracle that I literally would be preaching. I'd be preaching, right? I preached, y'all. That one week that I fell and busted my mouth, I preached literally with that tooth yankety. I went to Australia, 20-hour flight with that yankety tooth. And I remember by the time I landed, I had a big old gap for me. And I was like, dear God. And then I went and got my y'all. I went and got my nephew's rubber band for his braces and put it around my teeth to try to hold them together. <laughs> Redneck. Redneck woman. You can't tell me nothing, okay? So listen, listen, I passed the test, y'all. I passed the test. I passed the test. And so I'm, 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 I know that this is for a fact that, that literally in that season, God was, y'all, y'all, y'all missed me, didn't you? I'm your whole comedic uh, tune on Live at Night. <laughs> Yo, I ain't even lying. I ain't even lying. I knew that God, like right when I fell, remember right when I fell? I'm going to get to my sermon just a second. Y'all remember, y'all know when I fell, I literally uh, got on here, like my face was swollen, so I left and I went to, hey, Sean Smith, we were just talking about you. Ah. So y'all, so listen, so we were, we were, I was swollen up like this and I went and got me some makeup and I ran into Alt, uh, Ulta and a lot of people know me around here, right? So I had on this little hat and I was incognito, had these sunglasses on. I might as well be honest. Everybody was wondering what happened. And so I walked in there and I just told him, I said, my husband did not beat me. Yo, I even asked Mark because my team, my staff, Angel, Val, everybody was telling me, Crystal, y'all, you cannot travel like that. There's no way, Pastor Kim, that you can go preach like you can't preach with your face swollen that bit. You look like Mark beat the heck out of you. And I said, for starters, everybody knows that ain't happening. (laughs) 
And so I asked Mark. I asked Mark. Y'all listen. Y'all listen. So I go and I asked Mark. I said, Mark, I said, you think I should go preach, you know, with swollen like this? And I got a big old gap, a yankety tooth. That tooth out there was up in my face. I was like, do you think I need to go, go preach like this? And I, Mark looked at me. What did you say, Mark? He said, do you remember what you said? I can't remember. He said, can you talk? <laughs> He said, can you talk? I was like, yes, sir, I can. He said, then you go preach. <laughs> he sure did. He said, if you can talk, you can go preach. And look what you did, too. And guess what I did, booze? I got out there and I preached my butt off. Y'all, but listen, that first conference I was going to, listen, that first conference I was going to, hey, my inner circle, I see y'all. When I, Y'all. The first conference I was going to preach at three days after it happened, I'm talking y'all, my whole mouth is all, like, my whole mouth was discombobulated. Like, I hit that thing. And my whole, everything was broken, like, messed up. Like, even my bite's still off. But I can still eat, so. Sean Smith, prop, uh, Prophet Sean said hi. So listen, so listen, Linda. The first conference that I went to preach at was called the Mir uh, Miracle Conference. Miracle conference. Y'all know. Y'all know. I was reading into this miracle conference. I was like, <laughs> I was like, there's a miracle in this room with my name on it. With my tooth all yankety. Ha uh ha. -huh. Y'all, I promise to God, I knew. I knew that night. I even walked a woman that had MS. She was walking on her little cane. I watched that woman. Literally, I said, you're about to walk. I had so much faith. I knew that woman was about to walk. And all of a sudden, she looked at me. She goes, I don't want to walk. I want to run. And I ran around that place with her. And when I got done, I knew my tooth was going to be in place. So I went, that thing was still as loose as I can. But listen, I did get a miracle because I would have never went and got veneers if I wouldn't have got a miracle. Oh, Kurt. <laughs> I would have never got my teeth and I always wanted pretty teeth. I'd have never taken time to do that. My mama said I got a whole miracle because I promised y'all something. I went to a whole nother level spiritually. Like whenever you hit rock bottom, y'all listen, I just want to encourage somebody while we right here anyway. God works miracles, just sometimes not in the way that we want him to work it. There was a miracle. There was a miracle that took place in my personal life during that season. It was like the four, four months of, it was June, July, August, September, the hardest Four months, and I'm telling y'all something, but it did something spiritual to me. I started hearing better. I started, I had a connection I have. I started live at nine. Y'all, what? Revival took off. Why? Because I was obedient. When I wanted to give up, y'all, I had a whole interior fracture in my mouth, and the dentists were like, we can't do nothing. Dr. Heavenly was the only one that could figure out what to do with my mouth because I didn't go to the dentist for two weeks. <laughs> I showed him, man. I'm going to tell y'all something. Sometimes, sometimes when things are going in your life a certain direction and it don't look like what it's supposed to look like in your mind, you better stop looking at how bad the situation is and you got to start looking for the blessing because, honey, I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me, Linda. There is a blessing in the storm that you're in right now. I promise you, you got to look for it. You got to look for it. Like, I'm even looking at situations right now going on in it around me and I'm seeing what the devil is meaning for evil God is stirring up for good I'm seeing it with my eyes why because I am always looking through I'm always looking through spiritual eyes I'm always now especially since this thing happened with my teeth that's that sensitivity that I have I'm always understanding that when things are going awry and things are going crazy and things are acting up my prayer walks got to get stronger and I got to start fasting. I got to start praying and I got to get more intentional and focused so I don't miss the elevation that God's about to take us to. And so that's what we're, t we're teaching on in this room. But I, I just want to encourage somebody, man, y'all listen to me. There is a blessing in the storm. And what you have to understand is every
every storm runs out of rain. Every storm runs out of rain. Where you're at right now ain't where you're staying. That financial situation is not where you're staying. That chaos and confusion that's going on all around you. Stop looking at the chaos and the confusion and look at the big picture. Look at what's happening in the big picture. I'm so thankful that every day of my life, I wake up with spiritual eyes and ears and I don't look at the chaos. I don't look at the storm or, or the little thing that's going on that may be the culprit, but I look at what God's doing on the outside and I'm not, see, this is where we get distracted. We start paying attention to the little imps. We start paying attention to the chaos. We start paying attention to the confusion. We start nursing it. We start cuddling it. And then all of a sudden we're angry, we're bitter, and we're missing what God's doing on the outside. He always, listen, I always tell y'all this. Thieves don't rob empty vaults. Stop walking around asking God, I don't know, I, don't, I wish God didn't trust me so much. I just wish God didn't trust me so much. And thank God that God's trusting you with what you're going through right now. Thank you, God, that you're trusting me with this storm. Thank you, God, that you're trusting me with this chaos and confusion that I'm going to come out. I believe I can fly. Oh, I ain't just coming out of this thing. Uh, if I got to go through this pain, if I got to go through this sickness, if I got to go through this heartbreak, if I got to go through this chaos, if I got to go through people walking out of my life, if I got to go through this, then you better best believe I'm going to come out on fire and I'm going to give the devil a black eye every day of the week. He going to wish to God he would have taken me out where he could have because I'm coming out of this thing stronger, more anointed, more wiser. What? I'm telling you what you're going through is qualifying you. And I just want to tell somebody on here tonight, man, don't you think where you're at is it. Don't you think where you're at is where the finale of where you're going to be. You know, I even this week, well, was getting on that plane, flying to London, I, I mean, just blown away, walked out, just walked, literally found myself walking in front of this massive church with all these people hungry for God and I walk out and I'm just, <laughs> y'all, this is what's about to happen in your life when you get your heart posture right and you get your mind right and you quit going around chasing little things. Stop chasing fires and start, stop being, stop being petty. Stop allowing your mind to stay small and start believing and prophesying of yourself. God, you're taking me to nations. You're taking me to the world. I'm not staying here. This is just my training ground. Y'all, I walked in that church, man. I got off that plane. I walked in that beautiful hotel. I mean, just the the power of God blowing in that place. I walked on the platform. The anointing just rocked the house. I mean, everywhere I go every weekend, I'm seeing just God just blown away at what God's doing in my life. And you know what God reminded me when I sat down in this chair tonight? He said, I want you to remind live at nine. I want you to remind those all your live at nine family and my inner circle and my Church of the Harvest Fayetteville family. I want it. I want to remind you this ain't where you're staying. Where you're at right now is temporary. It's a temporary. This is a word God gave. It's a temporary inconvenience, but this is not where you're staying. This is not, this is just preparation for that next level that God's about to take. This is just temporary, temporary inconvenience. You are being, you are, in fact, some of you need to high five yourself and say, get ready for my reintroduction because I'm about to come back and I ain't going to look like what I've been through. I ain't going to smell like what I've been through. Y'all listen to me. When I look at God, nobody but God can do what he's done in my life, for starters. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. I don't know how it happened. It was, it's was. it been six years since I was at Bloomingdale's, and I'm getting to travel all around the world, and I'm getting to preach in these great, phenomenal churches. I get to pastor one of the best churches on the planet. We're making it. We're making it. We're making it. And listen, you got to make sure that you're not allowing this temporary inconvenience. This is the word God gave me when I was taking my luggage in tonight. You got to make sure that you don't let the temporary inconvenience of what you're looking at stop you and detour you from where God's taking you. You got to make sure you don't miss the lesson. Make sure you don't miss, don't miss, don't miss the next level because you're so busy being angry about the season that you're in. Y'all, nobody could do this. Nobody could do what God's done in my life. Nobody, nobody knows me. I live in Fayetteville, Georgia. 
Yo, my mom and daddy, they pastored 50 people. I, they gave me a church of 50 people. All right, they're awesome pastors. My, my, my daddy and mom did incredible. My dad and mom started great churches, two and three churches. And my daddy was a, a, a apostle. Man, he did incredible. He pastored phenomenal churches. But the church that he gave me was one after he had already retired. He came out and he gave me this church. And listen, nobody told me how to do what I'm doing. It was me and God. It was me being okay with the temporary inconvenience of getting prepared for where he's got me right now. This is a word for somebody out there right now. You got to prepare. You got to prepare for where God's about to take. You got to prepare for that next level right now in the inconvenience. In the te- this is a temporary inconvenience. This is not where you're staying. The storm's about to run out of out of this the storm's about to run out of rain. And you're it's going to make sense. You're going to come out pure. You're going to come out spotless and you're going to walk into places literally pinching yourself cuz you can't believe you're there. You're going to be just like me. I can't even believe I'm there. And let me tell you something else. Let me tell you another secret. Here's what happens. And some of you are here right now. God's already opening some of, uh, God is already opening some doors. God's already opening some doors for some of you. And here's the deal. If you're not careful when God begins to open those doors in your life, you will sabotage what God is about to do. Let me get rid of this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get rid of this person. Bye, boo. If you're not careful, you will sabotage that next level that God's about to take you to because you will not feel qualified. Where God, he has taken us, these temporary inconveniences that we are walking in is qualifying us for a level that we, y'all, you're about to walk into rooms. You are about to be in places that you never dreamed. That, I mean, you're about to be in people's presence that you used to would kill to be in their presence. And you ain't going to care if you're in their presence once you get in their presence. You're going to have phone calls from people that you used to would do anything to have a phone call from them. And now you ain't going to take their phone calls. I'm telling you, it, you, the temporary inconvenience that God has got you in is, is getting you prepared for that next level. And I'm going to tell y'all something. you got to make sure right now in your temporary inconvenience that you're preparing yourself. Number two, when God does do what he's going to do in your life, you got to be careful that you don't sabotage it by thinking you're not good enough. You got you to gotta make sure that when God begins to open these doors and he's going to open major doors for you, major doors for you. I don't believe that you came into my live at nine and you've gotten connected to me. I don't believe it was a coincidence and you don't know it was a fluke. No, I believe that God does everything by divine appointment. God does, ev- he don't do nothing in my life unless he had his hand in it. He had his hand in you coming up in here so that I could prophesy to you that you have to make sure that you you ain't small minded. Some of y'all still so small minded that you're asking God, where's my promise? He said, I've already got it prepared, but you can't handle what you're praying for. Because when God gives you what you're praying for, you got to be ready to handle it because you're going to be in places that you are not going to be feel qualified for. And if you're not careful, you will sabotage yourself. I'm telling you, you ain't even going to be able to fat y'all. When I walk out in these churches, when I walk out in these churches and I look at this and I think of all the people that are way more qualified than me, okay, like been preaching for 20 and 30 years. I've been doing it for six, way more qualified and, and got degrees, you know, and, and I look at that and I walk out there and here's, here's, the, here's the thing that I've, I've, I've had to, I have had to fight was feeling that feeling of, I, I how did I get here? Like, I, I hope I don't, I hope I don't mess this up. I, I hope that I, uh, and, and then you'll get up there and you'll do what God's told you to do. And then you'll get down and you won't even enjoy the process. Y'all, I went through so much of my life by, by, by literally being uh, moved by God and God was doing incredible things in my life. And then I would go back to the room and beat myself up. Oh, that was the stupidest sermon you ever preached. You, you screwed that up. You really met. They, they ain't never gonna let you back. And I would beat myself up for like a year and a half. Always, man, I ain't even qualified to be here. Scared to death, scared to death. Probably not until like this year. I got to a place where I'm so confident in the calling that God's called me to, in the lane that he's put me in. I'm not trying to be like nobody else. I'm not trying to preach and hoop and holler. That's everybody else. Everybody else can do that. I choke. I'm good at being my own. That's right. 
I'm good at being my own person and that's where you got to be. And I believe that God connected you to me so that he could see if God can do it for me, he's going to do it for you. Listen, this is why I always tell y'all, you got to be careful who you connecting yourself to. You better be connecting yourself to some people that that are where you want to go. You better get connected to some people that every day of your life when the enemy starts telling you, you ain't qualified, you ain't good enough. You got somebody in your ear like me screaming, get up. You got this. You ain't seen nothing yet. This is a temporary inconvenience. Get up, get up, get up. Oh, you've been crying over this for long enough. Get your butt up. Pull your big girl. Pe- pull your fruit of the looms up and get up. Now, I'm telling y'all, because you're going, you're, we're in a season. We're going into a whole new decade, and God ain't playing. He is qualifying people. Listen, when God comes on the scene, he qualifies. He qualifies. He qualifies. He qualifies. And it don't matter who don't qualify you. It don't matter who looks at you. It don't matter how many people sit around the table and talk about you. It don't matter saying you ain't this and you ain't that. Baby, when God comes on the scene, he like, I approve. I approve. I approve. I approve. I qualify. I qualify. Now let's go. Let's go. That's what God's going to do. It's going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, it's going to blow your whole doggone mind. So the word God gave me for you was, listen, it's, an, it's a temporary inconvenience. What you're staring at right now, ah, what you're staring at right now is a temporary inconvenience. Some of y'all are already walking in a breakthrough. That's why I gave, gave you the other word that said, make sure that you don't get to a place where you sabotage yourself thinking you ain't good enough. My daddy used to always tell me, Kimberly, you get in there and you just act like you know what you're doing. Even if you got to go home and Google it. Y'all, I even started an interior design company <laughs> in my previous life. Uh, somebody had to make some money in the family. And, and, and so I, I, I went and I showed this church some colors. Me and Brian went and showed this church some colors. And I didn't no more know what I was doing in the man of the moon. And I remember they said, can you decorate? I'm like, yeah, girl, pasta. I got this. I got this. I was scared to death. I had to go home and Google how how you pick out colors, how you make drapes. Uh, Thank God I had Brian. Brian, I love you, Brian. If you ever see this, I love you. Brian came into my life and helped. That's how God rolls, man. I'm telling you something. That's how God rolls. It, you just got to sometimes act like you know what you're doing. And you got to put your shoulders back even when you feel like hiding. You got to put them shoulders back anyway and carry your... Y'all listen to me. I am a lot for a lot of people. I am a lot. I know I'm a lot. I even was in, in London. And you know, in London, they were all very conservative. And, 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 and I'm a lot. I, and I was on my best behavior. <laughs> They even said, they even, the pastor even got up and she said, I love pastor. I love her so much. She said, she goes, Ooh, the second night she introduced me, she's like, Ooh. she says, she's very hyper. And I'm thinking, I was very calm. <laughs> y'all, y'all know how I joke a lot when I'm preaching and stuff like that. Y'all know, I didn't even hardly joke a lot. Like, you know, when I go to another country, I'm very, re- like, it's just different. You know, I'm still learning. That was only my fourth international trip to preach. And so I'm very honoring and you know what I'm saying? And so that's a word for y'all tonight. Listen, you got to just go with it. You got to, you got to go with it. When you, I'm talking, just jump, baby. You got to do, you got to literally tell God, God, I'm on jump. And you either going to teach me how to fly. I'm going to go get me a Wazala store. I'm going to make me some jewelry. And I'm going to get y'all. I, there's a lady on Instagram right now. Her name is Shoe Queen. Shoe Queen made me some necklaces. She made me one necklace. This is how you do it, y'all. I'm about to give you some tips. Huh? Y'all ready? Here's your tip. Here's your tip. So listen. So this lady, Shoe Queen... She sent me S-H-U Queen. Y'all go buy her stuff. She's got phenomenal jewelry. Very well quality. And so, so she sends me this turquoise necklace with a cross. This is how y'all got to do it. This is why you got to be confident. She sends me, she says, I would like to send you a piece of jewelry for blessing me. Now, what she, what she, she's probably smart. She probably knew. I'm going to get a piece of jewelry in your hand and then you're going to have to buy some more jewelry from me. <laughs> 
because that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. So, so you have to believe in yourself so much. I even had to break that spirit of not wanting to, to, to uh, bother people or inconvenience people. People would ask me all the time to do their forwards and do their endorsements for their book. And I was like, oh, I can't ask anybody to do my endorsements or my book because what if they really don't want to, but they just do it because they feel like they have to, you know, just that stupid spirit. And uh, I broke that mess off of me too. And I found out that came from special ed. So in special ed, I felt like I wasn't good enough, learning disability my whole life, felt like I wasn't good enough. And so it rubbed off because the enemy knows wherever there's areas in your life that you don't take care of, that's where the enemy will show up. So if you got an insecurity problem from your ex telling you your butt was too big and ain't nobody gonna ever love you, ain't nobody gonna ever love you in your big thick thighs, y'all all of a sudden, you got to sit in security and you're settling for any bozo on the planet. You got to fix all of that before you get to another level. You got to fix all that. So she sends me this necklace, y'all. She sends me that necklace. And you know, I've bought four pieces from her since. And she got some expensive jewelry. It's not very expensive. It's worth it. Very good quality. Very good quality. It's, it's actually not very expensive considering uh, other stores that I've looked at. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, she her beads are just heavy. It's just nice, nice. And y'all know what I'm preaching. I knock everything over. I, I'm in my necklaces and preaching with my necklaces and everything's flying and they don't break, huh? So that's good stuff. So that's how you got to do it. You got to be brave enough to step out and say, I know you're going to love my stuff. Let me just, de let me just, not, not, not that some of y'all like, girl, I can't even pay my, my light bill. <laughs> I can't be giving nobody nothing. That's cool. Go get your Wazala store. Don't go to McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Ty. Ty. Ty Hicks. Let's talk about Ty. Ty works for me. Y'all know how he started working for me? I needed a freaking media person. The queen of media. I needed a media person. I needed somebody that was a millennial that, that could, you know what I'm saying? And so Ty started making pictures, took, took, started in his, in his downtime. Started taking pictures, right, Pastor Kevin? Pastor Kevin, I'm going to be at his church, y'all, in Holtzville, New York, on the 12th, preaching at Jesus is Lord. Holtzville, New York, get your butt there. It's free. So, so Ty started making these pictures with, with his name on it. My quotes, my picture, but with his name on it. You're like, I ain't doing nothing free for nobody. That boy got a whole job. He's on my team. Huh? About to get a whole race. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, you got to get your foot in the door. Some of y'all over here acting like you already, you already, you know, running a five, uh, a, a, a $500 million company and you just need to get your foot in the door. You got to do it. Y'all know how many times I walked in people's houses and said, it would have normally cost me $75 to go in and give you a, a price to decorate your house and I would do it for free just to get in the door. The very first church I ever got, I went for free and I got the whole doggone church to decorate. Uh-huh. You just got to get your foot in the door, but you don't get your foot in the door if you don't feel confident. It's one thing I love about Ty is he's confident. It's one thing I love about Shoe Queen. She's confident. That's the one thing about me. I'm confident. Why? Because we got healed and we know what we give is good. When you know your heart's right and you know what God has given you, God has birthed inside of you, you know it's there. You know that God put it there. You got so much confidence. You walking with so much confidence that can't nobody tell you, can't nobody tell me nothing. Nothing. Now you ain't cocky, but you confident in God. There's a difference. You are qualified. You are. And if you don't believe in yourself first, then nobody else will ever believe in you. You got to believe in yourself and you got to carry yourself like you want to already, like you're already there. You literally got to carry yourself. Listen, y'all, when I first started preaching, I was preaching for 10 people. These people would fly me. These people would, I would fly myself out. I just wanted a church to preach in. <laughs> Me, hey, me and Lincoln, y'all remember back in the day with me and Lincoln, this was just like four years ago, three years ago, and they would put me on like four flights, they, they, they'd buy a flight for me, then they'd put me on like five flights to get to one place, it would take me 12 hours to get to Texas, because they were trying to get the cheapest flights, y'all know, I know you gotta do what you gotta do, well I did it, I was anxious, I was excited, I would get there, and then all of a sudden the person would tell me, God told me to give the offer to somebody in the crowd, I'd be like, I gotta eat, I gotta eat, Y'all, but you know what I did? I still went. It was almost like God was like, are you going to, you're going to be preaching for 10 people. 
five people. Sometimes it'd be five people. It'd be me and five people. Yo, I ain't even kidding. I just would preach everywhere. And I remember God was like, let me just see. Let me just see. It, 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 how you gonna do? You gonna get your panties in a wad? Cause you're like, oh, I just travel all the way here and ain't nobody here. They lied. They told me there were going to be 500 people here and there's two people here. <laughs> Y'all, you can ask anybody. It, even ask my team. My team will tell you. Ask my team when I ain't around. I am what you see is what you get 24-7, baby. And you can ask anybody. I would walk into those places and I would preach. Listen to me. I would preach. I would preach like I was standing in front of 20,000 people. I would preach to them too. I would pour my guts out. I'm going to tell y'all something. I would pour my guts out. I, that's the one thing about me. I pour everything I got with even these lines. I drive you crazy. I'm on a hundred for 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man, when, when God does it, you know what I'm saying? I raised a thousand dollars for my first conference and I drove seven hours, right, Stacy? You just gotta do what you gotta do. And I know with every test that you pass, God said, man, if I can trust you with a yankety tooth to preach, I can trust you with more. And he keeps giving you more. And he keeps giving you more. And he keeps giving you more. He says, I can trust you to preach to two. Like there's 20,000 people in there that I can give you more. My church on Wednesday night, ain't nobody ever come to my church on Wednesday night because we out in the woods. I will get up in that church on a Wednesday night with 10 people there. And I'll preach like there's a million. You know why? Because I'm not moved by what my eyeballs see. I'm moved by what God's put in me. And there may be one person looking on your, y'all like, oh, I can't do no Facebook lives. When I do a Facebook live, there's only one person on there and it's embarrassing. That one person, you might be walking off of a cliff, boo. Yeah, that one person might be contemplating suicide and you might be saving that one person that turns out to be Billy Graham. You better get yourself right. So here's my scripture. <laughs> here's my scripture. Here's my scripture tonight, baby. Proverbs 4 and 18. Proverbs 4 and 18 ain't got nothing to do with the whole spill that I went off on. That was all just God downloading and somebody needed to hear it. Mm -hmm. Do not despise small beginnings. Don't you despise where you are. This, this is just a temporary inconvenience. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Trust in the Lord with all your might and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord. That's just not even my scripture, but you're welcome. Trust in the Lord with all your might and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to bless you and not harm you, give you a future and a hope. If you seek me, you'll find me. If you knock, the door will be open. See, we leave those scriptures out. The Jeremiah 29, 11. We leave out 12 and 13, which is the most crucial part of that whole, uh, whole, whole scripture. Because basically, it's saying you got a part to play in this. Uh-huh. That's what I've been preaching for the last 30 minutes on here. You got a part to play. You got a part to play in going to that next level. God is not going to move your feet, boo. He is not going to move your feet. He's not going to help. Listen, y'all laying in my bed, broken in a million pieces in 2006, begging God to take the pain away from me. Take this pain away from me. Y'all, I wanted God to be a genie in a bottle. And you know what? You know what God spoke to me and said in my spirit? One of the first things I ever heard God say at 36 years old, a preacher's kid, because I was so just, just cluttered the, my whole life that I could never hear him. He said, I can't give it. I can't take your pain away. You have to get up and walk away from it. That's what God told me. So that's a word for you. If you seek me, you'll find me. Knock and the door will be open. Now, don't give up. Don't get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. I've come too far to give up now. I've come too far to give up now. My due season is coming. 
My new season is here. My new season is coming. I've come too far to give up now. My new season is coming. I shall, I will reap a harvest. My family will reap a harvest. Anybody connected to me will reap a harvest. Some of y'all need to change what you're saying in your mouth. You need to watch what's coming out of your mouth because your life looks like what you're speaking. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of your words. What's coming out of your mouth is a prophecy of your future. You don't like something, watch what you're saying. Watch what you're sowing. So my scripture says, but the path of the, uh, but the path of the um, just and righteous is like the light of dawn that shines more and more brighter and clearer until it reaches its full strength and glory in its perfect day. We all face challenges. This is my ending. This is my endings, babies. This is my endings live at nine. We all face challenges. All of us. You are not that special <laughs> to think that you're the only one going through hell because you're not. Life is going to hand us lemons, but we're going to make lemonades because we all face challenges. We all go through stuff that we're like, what in the world? What in the world just happened? I never, yes, change your narrative. I never in a million years saw this coming. I never thought my kid would ever talk to me. I never thought my kid would act like this. I never thought my husband would walk out on me and say he never loved me. I never thought that I'd be facing a, a starting over in a career at my age. Oh my God. And then you got to say it happened. Now what? And you got to get up and you got to change your narrative. I love that, Stacey. And you got you to gotta listen. You got to see yourself out of it because as long as you see yourself in it, you're staying there. We all face challenges. We all face, we all have obstacles to overcome. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. We all have obstacles to overcome. But if we can keep the right perspective, it will help us stay in faith so that we can move forward in freedom, in breakthrough, in victory. You may feel right now, right tonight, as though the challenges you are facing are so big and insurmountable. They may be so doggone overwhelming. One thing that I've learned in life, one thing that I've learned in my own life, is that average people have average problems. Ordinary people have ordinary challenges. But remember, we're not average. You're not average. You're not average Instagram. You're not average Facebook. You're not average Periscope and Twitter. You're not average. You're not average. You're not ordinary. You're not ordinary. You are extraordinary. You are exquisite. You are, when God created you, he was like, man, I did good on this baby. Huh? You are extraordinary. God breathed God breathed his life into you. He breathed he went, and breathed his life into you. You are exceptional. And exceptional people face, face exceptional obstacles, exceptional difficulties. But the good news, you ready for the good news? Y'all ready for the good news? Hi, boo. Y'all ready for the good news? The good news is, that we serve an exceptional God. When you have an extraordinary problem, instead of being discouraged, be encouraged. Instead of being discouraged, be encouraged, knowing that you are an extraordinary person and you have an extraordinary future. Your path is shining brighter and brighter and brighter, and brighter, and brighter, because why? You are extraordinary, and you are made by an extraordinary God. You got to be encouraged tonight, because your life is an extraordinary path. You were built for this. You can do hard things. You can do hard things. You can do hard things. You've got this. You are extraordinary. You are created by an extraordinary God and you are an, on an extraordinary path. So you got to keep standing in faith. 
Some of you need to, come on, get yourself woken up. You got to keep standing in faith. You got to keep declaring victory. And you got to keep declaring the promises of God over your life. And listen, you got to believe because you have an exceptional future. Why? Because it ain't over. It ain't over. Why? Because it's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is flowing my way. A season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. <laughs> my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Come on, some of you just need to, come on, y'all need to be like, man, I've been selfish. I've been petty. I've been caught up in my feelings. I give it away tonight. I'm going to rest in your arms tonight. I give myself away. I'm sorry, I've, I've been preaching a lot. So you can use me. I give myself away. <laughs> Man, I love y'all so much. Listen, this is one of my favorite songs too. I'm going to sing it to you tonight. Sorry. Uh, uh, he knows your name. He knows your name. When I start feeling a little weary and a little overlooked. He knows my name. He knows my name. Oh, how he talks with me. <laughs> oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he tells me that I am his own. So now I pour out my heart to you. Come on, tell him. Here in on live at nine, I give myself to you because you know my name. Thank you, Jesus. He knows our name. He knows you. He loves you. He sees you. You are an extraordinary person made by an extraordinary God and you're on an extraordinary path and you're going to be so you're going to be so thankful you didn't give up. You're going to be so thankful that God did not answer those prayers. Some of y'all be mad at God because he didn't answer those prayers. You're going to be thanking you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't answer those prayers because what God's got coming into your life is so much greater than what you prayed for. Ha, 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 ha. Delight yourself in the Lord. He going to give you the desires of your heart. Trust and obey, for there is no other way. Huh? Come on, man. I love y'all so much. I will see y'all tomorrow night. I will see you tomorrow night. We will have prayer call. No, we got prayer call in the morning. We got prayer call in the morning. I might be jet lag, but I will be on in the morning. Uh-huh. Y'all know in London, it's like 4 o'clock right now. <laughs> 5 o'clock. Five o'clock in the morning, but I will be up at, at six at uh, seven a.m. Eastern Standard Time prayer call Tuesday morning right here. Then I will see y'all back here tomorrow night. I will be doing a podcast on thankfulness, a uh, great podcast that God's given me for tomorrow. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. If you want something different in your life, you got to do something you ain't never done before. 
right? If you want something different in your life, you got to do something you ain't never done to get what you, what you want, right? So y'all need to listen. You need to pour into yourself. You got 30 days left. We are starting a fast. We are starting a fast on December the 1st. I'm calling all my social media platforms. I'm calling live at nine. Yep. I'm calling all my live at nine congregation. And all of my inner circle family, my, my Real Talk Kim inner circle, all of us, please, please do something you ain't never done to get what you ain't never got. December the 1st through December the 2nd, we're doing a fast. You can fast anything that has a hold on you. Some of y'all need to fast cigarettes, them things nasty anyway. You need to quit so you stay around with me for a whole lot longer. So, so some of y'all need to fast TV. Some of y'all need to fast social media. Some of y'all need to fast uh, sweets. Some of y'all need to fast coffee. Some of you need to fast Diet Coke, Mellow Yellow, Diet and Mountain Dew. Some of y'all need to fast. Uh-huh. You need to fast some stuff. Bad talking, gossiping. So December the 1st through December the 2nd, I'm putting up on my Facebook page. I'll do it on my Instagram page. And all of in my inner circle, I'm already putting up December the 1st through December 7th. We're doing the Daniel fast, but you can do whatever kind of fast you want to do. So you can't say, I got diabetes. I can't do it. Yeah, you can. There's something you can do to push the hand of God. And so um, fast, fast. Yes, fast anything that, that's got a hold on you. And so, uh, yes, I will put this live on my YouTube channel. It will go up on my YouTube channel. So look for, uh, just go to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Real Talk Kim. My podcast is on iHeartRadio, everywhere, Spotify, everywhere. Shopping, Jerry, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, my podcast is called Real Talk Kim. My YouTube channel is Real Talk Kim. I also have a free app. I have a free app, um, a free app that is uh, called Real Talk Kim. You can go download it on your phone. I send out notifications throughout the day just to encourage you. It's awesome. Um, Real Talk Kim. And um, so, yeah, I'm Real Talk Kim everywhere. Instagram, Periscope, Twitter, TikTok. Yeah. Kim's everywhere. All right, I love y'all. See y'all in the morning at 7 a.m. Eastern. Did y'all get blessed tonight? Did y'all, y'all miss me? Man, I missed y'all. Huh? I missed y'all. Yes, I did, babies. But I, I came with the word tonight. I came with the word tonight. If you claim that word and you take that word, I'm telling you something. I'm telling you something. You're going to be delivered. You got to, you got to, you got to start changing. You got to sow into yourself. You got to, you got to do for yourself. I'm telling you, you got to link arms with, with the right people. You really do. That's why I listen, 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 y'all. My, my inner circle, my real talking inner circle, I just started that. It's a, it's a mentorship program. I'm building a whole community. We're about to start where we're putting them all over the place, where you'll have your own little hubs. And so y'all, innercircle.realtalkkim.com, innercircle.realtalkkim.com, and find out about it and sow into yourself. Start 2020 off right. Get all the crap and the clutter and the chaos and the junk, the gossip, the lying, the broken heart, whatever you carry in, in your bag of goodies. Let it go. Get yourself. You got 30 days. Make sure that December 1st, you start out with a different mindset. I'm telling y'all, I'm already hearing tons of testimonies just from live at nine and the inner circle of people that their marriages are healed, that they're, I mean, got jobs they've been praying for. Everything starts right here and right here. And so we're getting your heart right. You can't hang around me and say tore up. You can't be messy and anointed, not around me. Ha! So I love y'all so much and I'll see y'all in the morning. I love you tons. Listen, realtalkkim.com right here. realtalkkim.com. Find out everything you want to know about me on my website. Also, I got books. I'm an author. Beautifully Broken, Beautifully Whole. When Your Bad Meets is Good. I just released my God's Girl sweatshirts and my Grateful sweatshirts today on my website as well. Tomorrow, make sure you get the podcast. It's going to be on fire. I love y'all. And if I don't hear, if I don't talk to y'all if y'all don't come back on here before tomorrow night's live at nine and you just happen to be with family for the rest of the week happy thanksgiving i'm thankful for you yes i am i'm thankful for you and so happy thanksgiving and for all of you that's gonna be on here with me tomorrow huh i will see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m and tomorrow night 
at nine. Live at nine is going down. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Love you, Twitter, Periscope. Love y'all. I love you, Instagram. I love y'all tons. I'm praying for y'all, man. I'm praying for y'all. Love you. I sure do love y'all, babies. I love you, Facebook, Inner Circle. I'm headed over to you now. I love me some y'all. See y'all, y'all go crush tomorrow. Come on, Facebook. Y'all go crush, 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 crush tomorrow. Don't let your negative self, don't let your doubt and doubt, doubt and downy self. Don't you, don't you, don't you take no trash into tomorrow with you. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off and conquer, crush. I love y'all. Bye.